Let's go to question number 47 and it is match the following. There is list 1 here, there is list 2. List 1 has the lists of electromagnetic waves like infrared, radio, x-ray and ultraviolet and we got to see their utility to treat muscular strain, broadcasting, detect fracture, absorbed by ozone. If we see straight way, ultraviolet is absorbed by ozone layer. X-ray is to detect the fracture of bones, radio waves is used for broadcasting and infrared waves is to treat muscular strain, IR imaging, those are the techniques. So this one is quite straightforward, A with 1, B with 2, C with 3 and D with 4 and there goes option number 1 which is the correct option. All right, let's go to question number 48, which comes from modern physics and it's a combination from atom and photoelectric effect and partially the magnetic force concept has been used. The radiation corresponding to 3 to 2 transition of hydrogen atom falls on a metal surface to produce photoelectron. So based on this, first of all, let me calculate the energy which is released. The energy of radiation is 13.6223, so 1 by 2 square minus 1 by 3 square. And that simple calculation gives you 1.89 electron volt. These electrons are made to enter a magnetic field of 3 into 10 raised to the power minus 4 tesla. Means the radiation falls from the photo from the metal the photoelectrons are emitted and those electrons would move in a circular path. So based on that we got to calculate work function. Alright, we calculated the energy of radiation on one part. Now let's try to see the radius of the charged particle is 10 millimeter. So largest circular path that means the radius corresponding to maximum kinetic energy and that R will be equals to root of 2 K M divided by B Q. And to calculate that kinetic energy easily, let us try to go in this way. Let us try to make it 2 Q V M by B Q assuming that kinetic energy comes after being accelerated from potential V just to simplify the calculation and in all calculation you will be getting potential as 0 0.8 volt that means the kinetic energy would be 0 0.8 electron volt. So what happens now the whole concept reduces to this thing that when this energy falls photoelectrons are emitted and the maximum Ke of the photoelectron is 0 0.8 electron volt so that would be very simple the maximum kinetic energy is incident energy minus of work function if phi is the work function and that comes out to be 1.1 electron volt. Question number 49 is from electromagnetic wave and a theoretical question has been raised and the question is based on the energy density. We got to comment on the relative magnitude of electric energy and magnetic energy density. Somewhere equal, somewhere double and so on. And we know it's a very known fact that electric energy density is equal to magnetic energy density. If at all we require the proof then that's half epsilon naught E square and that's one half epsilon naught b square c square e by b c and c is 1 by mu epsilon naught so that comes out to be b square by 2 mu naught. So from that using the relation of c square as 1 by mu naught epsilon naught you could see the electric energy density finally leads to magnetic energy density. Okay, question number 50 is from ray optics. 
it says a green light is incident from water to air at its critical angle that means from water to air the angle of incidence corresponds to the critical angle of green and we got to answer from that fact the entire spectrum of visible light will come out the entire spectrum will come out at angle 90 degree and the first one was at various angle and third the spectrum of visible light whose frequency is less than green will come out and similarly the spectrum of visible light whose frequency is more than green will come out it's something like this the question says here is if I say white the angle of incidence is equal to critical for green so green comes in this way this has been given and based on this we got to predict about the other ways we know that sine theta c is 1 by mu and mu is minimum for red that means theta c is maximum for red so if this is the real axis for theta c violet indigo blue green yellow orange and red you could see theta c is maximum for red and theta c is minimum for violet and in this situation the angle of incidence is this which is equal to critical of green you could see angle of incidence for violet indigo and blue would be greater than the critical because angle of incidence is here and that's greater than the critical so violet indigo blue would be reflected and likewise yellow orange and red would be refracted so it matches option number three where whose frequency is less than green will come out because we know yellow orange red has wavelength greater than that of green and these frequencies are less than that of green so it matches with option number three